little too many things here. I will come over here, right click on it, and create a new query. One of the things that you you will be, um, you know, you will be learning, I guess, or you will become aware of it. Then in SQL Azure, you pretty much have to connect to the database uh, that you need to work with. So you'll notice that here we are connected to the sales database. I'm going to essentially go ahead and run all of the script. And now, if I refresh my tables, you do notice that I do have a products table. And if I select data from it. There should be nothing in it. And I also do have a clustered index in here, which is right there. Okay. So I think at this point, we have our table, we have the clustered index, we are really, uh, ready to switch gears, and uh, we will be essentially creating the package. Before uh, we do that, uh, Real quickly, a couple of things to talk about. Um, we are going to launch the program and pick integration services project. And then uh, we are going to be creating two data source. One will be uh, the local on-premise SQL database, pretty much the one we showed you. And the destination will be a cloud SQL Azure database. And you have to make sure that when you are setting up the uh, data source, you are using this provider, which is the .NET provider SQL client. Uh, data provider. Uh, we tried to use some of the other providers and it did not work. So uh, just uh, this is something to keep in mind. And so uh, after we do these um, data sources, we will be creating a data flow task. So let's switch to uh, Business Intelligence Development Studio. I already have a project running. Uh, if you're new to this, you can launch this by going to Start, All Programs, Microsoft Visual Studio and do this. And once you come in here, you will be doing File, New Project. And then you will be picking Integration Services Project. And you can obviously name, name them as you like. Um, but we have already uh, done this to get uh, to get going so when you come in here uh, this was actually minimized uh, you will notice your toolbox is on the left side uh, we will be working that within a second here a few seconds but the first thing I need to do is really come in here and create uh, new data sources okay and when you do this this will uh, essentially start a wizard now we will be needing uh, two data sources one is obviously our local server so I will click on new and for your local server, uh, I don't think it really matters what you use. Um, native, uh, what, what they picked in our case should be fine. Uh, I will just connect to my local instance. I'm using uh, Windows Authentication. Actually, let me just use SQL for this part. And then I am going to connect to Northwind database. You can test your connection. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so that would be your local instance. And then I am going to, uh, let me do this. I will finish this. Uh, let me just call this Northwind Local. Okay, so that remember that is our data source. And I apologize for this. I've been getting these, uh, I think I must have installed Urban Data Modeler, and it seems to be seems to want to run things every time I do something in here so hopefully it will go away but uh, the next thing we need to do is create the destination and this is the part that I was mentioning that you do want to use a net provide net provider and then SQL client data provider okay and uh, our server name is not that let me go back to this it's pretty much this long connection string try this instead here and I am going to use my login for this and as for as the database um, I'm not sure it is going to pull the actual uh, database that we are trying to work with if it's not we will simply go ahead and add it 
manually to this, but we'll give it a second here to see if it's actually smart enough to do that. I'm actually going to go ahead and pause this uh, real quick and I will be back shortly. So I am actually back. Um, I think it fell asleep for a few seconds here, but uh, it did not pull uh, the database name actually uh, from this information. So I went ahead and typed it in, which is the sales database. I'm actually going to go ahead and test connection, which it does like, which is a good thing. Uh, and then uh, simply let me just call this sales-cloud. All right, so now we pretty much have our data sources all configured. Um, at this point, uh, we uh, we did do this, and now we are going to create the data flow task. Uh, let me just quickly talk about it before I show you the demo. Um, we are going to drag a data flow task onto the design pane, and uh, feel free to change any properties uh, if you like. We we will leave the default settings as is. Next we will be creating uh, adding an OLEDB data source which uh, is going to be mapped to the local SQL Server instance so that's what we're running on this machine and we'll configure it and uh, by, what, by that what I mean is getting the products uh, table all squared away. The next thing is we are going to add an ADO .NET destination which remember is going to be mapped to our SQL Azure and then we will also configure that so that um, the the table that we created in step one using the create table statement is all ready to go. Uh, we will make sure the mappings are configured properly and then let's uh, let's enough talk and let's do a demo here. So on here uh, looks like my Rin data modeler is still gathering the required information so I'm gonna unfortunately have to wait for this. Uh, notice that for now uh, under these tabs we don't really have anything okay so the first thing we need to do is go to the control flow tab uh, let's pin this thing down I am going to drag a data flow task onto this. Uh, the data flow task is really you know the main main component of SSIS that's what moves essentially data from uh, from one place to another and then once I do that now I can go to the data flow task by the way you can change the name of these properties and whatnot I'm just uh, trying to uh, stay on track here so the first thing like I mentioned is we need to get a um, uh, let's see in uh, doesn't matter we could get an AD, ADO net source or OLEDB I will just uh, use OLEDB uh, data source and remember this is going to point to our uh, local instance. I'm going to go ahead and select edit and then uh, from here we don't have anything yet so I will click on new and this should pull up uh, the local host that we did configure earlier. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. Then I will come down to my data access mode. I will be selecting a table and then we should be able to pull up the products table which is right there. You can do a preview if you like, if you like to see the data. Uh, it should be uh, pretty pretty much set to go here. I will go ahead and click OK. So that is our source. The next thing we need to do is go to data flow destinations and we need to pick, in this case we do need to pick an ADO.NET destination. Before I configure this I do need to grab my green arrow which basically means on success go uh, you know move the data from here to this one and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and select edit here and in here I will be essentially again uh, I need to point to my second data source which is gonna be our cloud SQL Azure connection and we do have that in here. If you look at the connection string, it talks about the server, uh, the database name, and then the user. Uh, let's go ahead and select OK. And let's see if it, it's actually able to pull pull the table this time. It says it's loading, so that's that's a good thing, I guess. One thing I've noticed is uh, that's 
I guess the drawback of SQL Azure is that you know it, it does have latency because it's at the internet level, so it's not going to be as robust as maybe your local network connection. But regardless, this was able to pull pull the table, which is uh, simply one table we have. Next, we need to do uh, click on mappings on the left, and uh, we really want to make sure that. Every